are you suffering from finasteride phobia? Do you get your blood test done at the drop of a hat? If the answer is yes, I have five questions for you. Do you think high testosterone causes baldness? Do you feel finasteride decreases testosterone levels? Does use of finasteride decrease the muscle mass and is not good for bodybuilding? Does the use of finasteride have steroid effects? Or do you think finasteride can cause permanent sexual side effects? If the answer to any four of these questions is yes, you need to watch this video. Stay on. Besides its effect on the libido and male sexual function, testosterone has a host of other salubrious effects on the body and they are bone metabolism, anabolic function that is helping in bodybuilding, regulation of mood and cognitive effects and the proper function of the heart and blood vessels. So though most of us relate the effects of testosterone only to libido and male sexual characteristics, it has a host of other good effects. Therefore, normal testosterone levels are required by the body. So to know how testosterone functions and to know the answers to the questions that I have raised earlier, you need to know a little bit about the metabolism of testosterone hormone. So you can understand why measurement of levels, certain levels of testosterone or other levels in the body is important and why some of the myths that you have, some of the notions that you have about testosterone and use of finasteride is wrong you need to watch this metabolism of testosterone. So to understand the metabolism of testosterone, we have to learn that the hypothalamus is the policeman of the hormonal environment of the body. Now this releases the gonadotropin release hormone, which in turn acts upon the pituitary gland and makes it to release luteinizing hormone, which in turn acts upon the Leydig cells of the testes where they form testosterone through cholesterol. Now this testosterone is released into the body and goes towards its target organs which are the liver, muscle, fat cells that is the adipose, ad, adipose cells, the skin, hair and the prostate and also bone and the brain. Now testosterone acts upon the liver, the muscle and the fat cells through the androgen receptors and exerts its effects. Testosterone is converted into estradiol due to aromatization, which is a reaction which converts testosterone into estrogen. And this exerts its effects on the bone and the brain. Testosterone does not require any conversion to act on the androgen receptors, which have an effect on the liver, muscle and fat cells or on the bone and the brain. However, in the case of the skin, hair and prostate, it needs to be converted by an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase to DHT. Now this DHT, is the active ingredient which has an effect on the androgen receptors and this exerts its effect on the hair causing baldness in those who are predisposed genetically and on the prostate where it causes benign prostatic hypertrophy. So in this you have to note that if DHT blockers inhibit 5-alpha reductase this causes an increase of testosterone in the blood. Now this testosterone is sensed by the hypothalamus through a negative feedback mechanism it increases the amount of aromatization of testosterone into estradiol. So therefore, you have to note that whenever a person is taking DHT blockers, it increases the levels of testosterone in the body and but through a negative feedback mechanism and also by increased conversion of testosterone into estradiol. By these two mechanisms, the amount of estradiol in the body also increases. Because of DHT, testosterone levels rise by 15 to 20 percent while taking DHT blockers like finasteride and dutasteride and also it leads to a similar increase in estradiol levels by 15 to 25 percent. Now with this knowledge in the background, let us revisit these five questions that the video is about. High testosterone level does not cause baldness. Baldness happens because of the susceptibility of the hair follicles to DHT. It is not because of testosterone. It is another matter that DHT is a byproduct of testosterone. However, testosterone is not responsible directly for balding. As we saw in the uh, metabolism cycle, finasteride does not decrease testosterone levels. When testosterone hits 5-alpha reductase, 
it blocks the conversion of testosterone to DHT. So when the DHT formation is less, the testosterone levels will rise. So therefore, the concept that finasteride decreases testosterone levels in the body is wrong. In fact, it is even mentioned in the Merck manual that finasteride increases testosterone levels by 50% when people use finasteride and up to 22 to 25% when they're using dutasteride because dutasteride blocks all three isoforms of 5-alpha reductase, 1, 2 and 3. Finasteride does not decrease muscle mass. The muscle mass or the anabolic effect of testosterone is not affected. Why? Because testosterone levels are not decreased with the use of finasteride. In fact, they are increased by 15%. However, what you need to note here is that though testosterone levels are high and they are causing their good effect on the anabolism in the body of bodybuilding, it is the estradiol levels which by negative feedback mechanism and also by increased conversion of testosterone to estradiol through a process of aromatization is the culprit because it is a feminizing hormone. So it is not the testosterone levels going down but the feminizing hormones rising up which make you feel that you have loss of muscle mass or that you are developing body fat. There is a rise of testosterone in the body while using the DHT blockers finasteride and dutasteride. However, this rise in testosterone levels as well as estrogen levels by about 15% to 25% is still within the physiological range. And since it is within the physiological range, use of finasteride and the elevation of hormones does not take you into the steroidal use category or territory. It is wrong to state that DHT blockers are having steroidal effect on your body. Crashing lipidos are only because of androgens. This doesn't happen in the use of finasteride or dutasteride or in any DHT blocker. So whenever I use a finasteride with my experience, I I am very cautious in prescribing the drug to three categories of patients. One, the patient should be emotionally strong. Number two, the patient should be lean. And number three, the patient should not be having obsessive or compulsive characteristics. So this will be very uh, easily brought out when you are counseling the patient and discussing with him all the regimes for hair loss and hair transplant. So therefore, it is very important for you to have a good dialogue with your patient and a protracted long dialogue in which you can bring out these characteristics and this will determine whether you will recommend DHT blockers to this patient or not or you will rely on certain other drugs which may be less effective but at the same time safe. This said, I do not want to give you a carry home message that I do not prescribe these drugs in people who are obese or who have compulsive or obsessive disorders. There are a large number of people who have more weight or who are obsessive or compulsive but do not have side effects to finasteride. They tolerate the drug very well. At the same time, there are a similar number of patients who are lean, who do not show any signs of obsession or compulsion but who have side effects. So therefore, it is very important to discuss this in great detail with the patient and try and guide him in the proper manner as far as use of drugs is concerned. However, I will get the baseline hormonal testing done, not for anything else but to rule out hypogonadism because hypogonadism is associated with obesity and in case the patient has low hormonal levels, the patient should not be offered DHT blockers. Why? Because there is a high chance of his relating the erectile dysfunction and other side effects to the drug. So reports of sexual disorders, erectile dysfunction, cognitive function, mood swings in a small fraction of the patients continues to cause severe apprehension in the minds of the patients who have been advised finasteride or dutasteride. The ongoing litigation due to ascribed side effects to finasteride and anecdotal stories you find on various forums and various social media platforms have not helped the case of finasteride. What is not brought out in these stories is that this side effect happens in a very very small fraction of patients. With more than 3 million patients having been exposed to finasteride, just about 30-32 patients reporting erectile dysfunction that was permanent in nature should not prevent you from taking this because the side effects might be there in a remote in a small fraction but the benefits of finasteride and dutasteride are immense. Now this paper evaluates the basic pathophysiological attributes of this condition such as hormone levels, body composition changes, cognitive function, mood and other characteristics of patients who report persistent sexual symptoms after discontinuation of finasteride therapy 
for hair loss. However, this enigma could not be scientifically corroborated and has been left to the courts for final decision. If you have any questions about this video, please leave your comment below and I'll get back to you for I learn as much from your questions as you may be learning from my video. So the stimulus of this video came from a patient recently who consulted me online and who asked me, doctor, I am so worried because every time my libido goes down, I am worried and I go to the lab and get my levels checked. But there is no difference in the testosterone levels. All the reports are the same. Whenever I have low libido or when I am normal, whenever I check, the levels are the same. Doctor, do you think the generic finasteride that I am using is giving me an effect for my hair loss? Or is there some other reason? Ignorance about finasteride and its relation with testosterone levels abounds. And that was the reason why I brought this video so that my patients who follow me on my YouTube channel get this information and they get this right. So hormonal level testing can be costly affair. There are only certain instances in which I recommend hormonal testing to my client. So there are only five instances in which I would recommend hormonal testing to my clients. And these five indications are as a baseline when I start finasteride, I like to check the testosterone levels so that I have a baseline to compare with and to discuss with the patient. Because the questions and queries of patients is ongoing. It carries on for one year, two year, three year. So there is something on which we can discuss the future course of treatment. Number two, when a patient is obese and a suspect hypogonadism. Thirdly, when side effects set in and it causes the patient untold misery or while switching from generic propitia to branded propitia or the other way around to calm the patient. And lastly, before prescribing Arimedex, which is an, which is a estrogen receptor inhibitor. So the tests that I recommend are three basically. Number one, free testosterone. Number two, estrogen. It is very important to note the estrogen testosterone ratio. But this is this is a determinant of this is the determinant of potential side effect that the patient would have. How much is the titration between testosterone and estrogen? This is the most important information to garner from testosterone levels on one hand and estrogen levels on the other. And lastly, I also do luteinizing hormone. Now many patients ask me whether DHT levels are important. See, DHT levels that occur in the bloodstream are not the DHT levels which are there in the skin around the follicles. Measuring DHT levels in the blood is in no way an indicator that we are measuring skin DHT levels and therefore blood tests to assess DHT are not done and not recommended either. So thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please click on the subscribe button so that I can bring more videos and you can see them. You can get notified and don't stop the questions. Please keep the questions coming and I'll be very happy to reply back. And see you in the next video. Stay safe, stay happy. Hindi mein ya Punjabi mein jankari ke liye aap mere ko prashn bhejiye aur main Saturday ko jo video banaunga usme aapka question include karunga aur usko sahi tarike se jawab dunga taaki aapko samaj aasake. Thank you, dhanyavad.